I've always been very interested in the science, the engineering behind auto-loading firearms, semi-automatic or fully automatic. Um, unfortunately, all of the ones that I have are semi-automatic. But the fact that you can take some piece of metal and polymer, fire around, pull a trigger, it shoots a projectile and cycles, spits out that case, loads another round, resets the trigger, does that all in one swift motion. I just think it's very cool. And since I'm in the middle of the MP5K build series, which has a totally unique operating system, unique to H&K and of course the clones of H&K guns, I thought that it would be a good idea to just show you guys how different firearm auto loading operating systems work, whether direct impingement, you know, gas piston systems, roller delayed, or even direct blowback. Um, because a lot of people just, if you don't know, you don't understand how this stuff works. So I thought it would be cool to show you guys. Most semi-automatic firearms are recoil operated or gas operated. So we're gonna start with probably the one that most people know the most, and that is the AR-15 system, which is the direct impingement system. Now, people have argued that this actually is a gas piston system and that the bolt itself is the piston. And I'll show you that in just a minute, what I mean by that. But basically what happens is when you fire around, click, the hammer ignites the primer, the projectile starts going down the barrel with hot expanding gases behind it. You can see through this handguard right here pretty well, which is why I'm using this one. Right there is a gas block. There is a hole in the top of the barrel and some of the gases that are propelling that projectile out the end of your bore go up that hole, down a gas tube into your action to cycle the bolt, which of course ejects the spent casing, strips a new round off of the magazine, which is loaded in here, and you know, resets the trigger and gets it ready to fire again. Let me show you what that looks like. So I've pulled the upper off of the lower to show you here. Let's see, I'll show you the side where you can see the gas block. That is the gas block right there. And then there's a gas tube that runs back and you can see the end of it right in there. So that's your gas tube and that interfaces with your gas key right here. Now, there is a hole from this gas key that goes into the bolt carrier group and it impinges, direct impingement, right? It impinges on the bolt, pushing it outward, which the way that it is designed makes it turn and rotate. So this bolt, when it goes into your chamber there, you see how that is shaped and the bolt is shaped, it rotates and locks into place in the chamber. But when gas comes in here, it pushes that, which rotates the bolt, unlocks it so that this thing can cycle, and then of course, in the rear end of your firearm, you have a buffer spring and a buffer. And so when that cycles back, it's sitting in here like this, cycles back, the buffer pushes it back forward, strips around and is ready to fire again. This is what we call direct impingement because the gas is impinging directly on the bolt. So that was DI, direct impingement, which is the most common system for most AR-15s. We will talk briefly about short stroke gas piston in just a minute, but I don't actually have one here to show you, but I can easily explain how it works. Another very common one is what's in the AK-47, AKM, AK-74, any AK. This has a long stroke gas piston. So much like the AR-15, you have a projectile coming down the barrel, and right here you have a gas block. And so this bleeds gas off of the barrel through the gas tube, just like an AR-15, but you notice the gas tube is a lot bigger. Well, that's because inside here is a gas piston and that is attached to the bolt itself, which is why it is called a long stroke gas piston. So I'm gonna show you how that one works too. This video is sponsored by Venice AI. Do you ever wonder what ChatGPT does with your conversations? 
We all know that our phones, Alexa, everything like that, listens to our conversations and then advertises to us based on what we say. Well, what else are these things doing with our personal information? They're selling it to third parties, including governments. In fact, the director of the NSA, the former director, is now sitting on the board of ChatGPT, which is why I'm using Venice AI. Venice AI is an AI software. It uses open source software that you don't have to download. It goes straight to your web browser, but the biggest thing is that it's private and permissionless. And so you don't have to worry about them selling your information to anybody else, which is kind of why it's a big deal to me. I like privacy, <laughs> even though I show everything that I do on a YouTube channel. My daughter, you know, she's 13. She uses AI for all kinds of things these days. She's been writing stories with it. She's been making music with it. It is incredible what you can do with AI. It's a very powerful tool, but keep your privacy while you use it with Venice AI. I like the pro plan personally. It just gives you a lot more that you can do and you can get a 20% off on your pro plan if you sign up using my link. That is venice.ai slash sawtooth tactical. Use that code to get 20% off. The code is sawtooth tactical. So here we have the AK. YouTube is very weird about disassembly and assembly of firearms, which is why I'm doing this beforehand. But this is the bolt carrier group on an AK. Now it also has a rotating bolt, although it rotates in this cam groove here um, when the bolt cycles back and forth. Now, for rifle rounds like the AK 7.62x39 or the AR 5.56-223, you need a rotating bolt with lugs that locks into place because if they're just the pressures are so high that you need something locked in there and then it unlocks when it cycles. Now this is the long stroke gas piston that I was talking about. So this piston is inside of your gas block. And so when those gases come up, they actually impinge on the piston here, not on the actual bolt, and pushes the piston back. You have a spring here that actually sits inside of your bolt carrier group there and attaches to the back of here. And so when that cycles back, the spring pushes it back forward, back into battery, stripping a new round, and the cycle continues much like with an AR-15. Now, briefly, I do want to talk about short stroke gas piston because a lot of AR type firearms use that these days. Most of them have a bolt carrier that looks very similar to this DI one here, but instead of an actual gas key here, there's just basically like a plate there, a, a flat surface, and there's a gas piston like this, but instead of the gas piston being attached to the bolt carrier group itself, they call it a short stroke because it has, it has an op rod and it just hits that part and basically hits it with a bunch of force so that it cycles back and then resets. And so that's how a short stroke gas piston works. Um, the cool thing about short stroke systems is that a lot of them don't actually use the buffer spring and tube that we saw on the DI AR. And so you can actually get them with, you know, folding stocks and stuff. Now with the AK, you can see you could easily use a folding stock or an underfolder, side folder, whatever you want, because there's nothing in the stock that has anything to do with the function of the weapon. It is all right in here in the receiver. Now we talked about with both ARs and AKs, that you have a rotating locking bolt because of the high pressures associated with rifle rounds. You need that to keep it safe so that your gun doesn't blow up on you. Well. Many pistol caliber carbines are direct blowback, which means no locking bolt whatsoever. And I will show you that in just a minute. It is literally just a heavy bolt and a heavy buffer and a heavy spring holding that thing in battery for long enough for the bullet to come out the end of the barrel before the equal and opposite reaction from the bullet firing pushes the bolt back to cycle it. So let's take a look at that real quick because that'll show us why something like 
this action is so special. So here we see the bolt for a direct blowback 9mm AR, PCC, pistol caliber carbine. As you can see, it is all just one piece. Now, of course, you can, you know, kind of disassemble this a little bit if you really wanted to. But this isn't a gas key that just rides where the gas key would in that channel. And as you see here, I need to clean it. <laughs> but also, there is no rotating bolt. And the reason for that being pistol rounds just are running at lower pressures. And so you don't need that lockup quite as much. But what you do need because of that, see the rear end of this is just a weight. It's a bunch of weight. And your buffer and spring in here is extremely heavy. It's a seven ounce buffer and a 308 spring. And that is all just there to hold this in battery while the projectile leaves the barrel so that it gives it enough time before it cycles and your gun doesn't blow up. But because of all that added weight that you need in order to keep the gun safe, many direct blowback PCCs do end up feeling like they have more recoil than you would really expect out of a nine millimeter. Honestly, nine millimeter direct blowback PCC, the recoil feels very similar to 5.56, even though it is a much lower pressure round. The reason we talked about the direct blowback AR9 and how simple it is, um, it is very reliable. This thing works great. Um, it runs pretty decently suppressed. It runs good under night vision. Like I've got no problems with it, it's awesome. But because of having to use that heavy bolt, heavy buffer, heavy spring for a direct blowback AR9, it has more recoil than you would think you should have in a big gun that's nine millimeter. Now, does it have a lot of recoil? No. This gun is very soft shooting, but this gun is ridiculously soft shooting. Uh, this is an MP5. Specifically, this is a Mac 5K. It's a Turkish clone uh, imported by SDS Imports. We are doing a whole build series on this gun. That's why it looks a little funny right now with the tall optic. I don't have the stock or suppressor on it yet because of course I have to wait for tax stamps. Otherwise my build would be done already. Um, but I got a lot of cool stuff that's gonna go into this. The thing is, is that the Germans at h &K got it right a long time ago. This has a roller delayed blowback action. And I'm gonna show you what that means in just a minute. But because of that, you see there is no big buffer tube. There is no buffer, no spring back here. Um, because it's not needed. And this thing has very, very easy to deal with recoil. So I'm gonna show you that right now too. The MP5 and its derivatives are very interesting because it has these rollers right here. There's one of them here. And there's one on this side. And as you can see, they kind of pop out and in. Well, so those rollers actually give this bolt lockup, similar to an AR-15 or an AK but without a rotating bolt, instead it locks up with these rollers up inside here, and that holds it in battery while the projectile goes down the gun. There is no gas system impinging on it. It is blowback to a certain extent in that it's the equal and opposite force on the bullet pushing backwards after the round is fired, but these rollers keep the bolt locked in place while that pressure is pushing the bullet out and only let it unlock once the pressure is safe to do so. Meaning that you don't need a heavy bolt. You don't need a heavy spring. This bolt is very lightweight. There's not a bunch of weight to it. And so because there's a lot less reciprocating mass and because it actually does have, you know, some type of lockup that delays the cycling of the action when you pull the trigger, and I mean, it delays it almost imperceptibly. You know, it's still very, very fast, but it's just enough to just lighten up that recoil an insane amount. There's a reason why people talk about the MP5 as such a soft recoiling gun. It is because of this roller delayed bolt carrier. And it's a design that they made, you know, quite a long time ago, back in the 60s. And it is still today probably the best pistol caliber carbine operating system. In fact, a lot of modern firearms companies 
are trying to make their own versions of roller delayed guns in, you know, AR platforms and stuff. So you get AR ergonomics and controls. But I mean, this is still the gold standard for a sub gun for a pistol caliber carbine because it makes the gun so soft shooting and so reliable. So I hope you guys found this video interesting. I just think that, you know, the, the, the engineering, the design that goes into these firearms that makes them function and work, to me, it's fascinating. I, I was an engineering major when I first went to college. <laughs> I did not graduate with an engineering degree. Um, but it is something that I've always been very interested in. And it's just something that I find very cool. It's one of the reasons that I, you know, like to like build and upgrade, customize guns and stuff. I'm not afraid to take them apart and to get into them because they're all just parts. Something breaks, you can fix it, replace it. And the more you know about your firearm, the better, because then you aren't worried about it. Like this, this is a broken bolt. This came out of this uh, PSA 11 and a half inch. Did a video about that a couple weeks ago, but you know what? The bolt broke. I replaced it. The gun runs fine again. And that's the thing about all of these things is that get into them. Figure out exactly how your gun works. I hope this video was helpful. If you had an AR, an AK, a MP5, a direct blowback PCC, whatever. Maybe we'll do another one about pistols at some point because all of the firearms we talked about today are hammer fired. Meaning that when you pull the trigger, there is a hammer inside here that fires, that falls and hits the firing pin. Um, but with pistols, we could talk about hammer fired versus striker fired. Maybe we'll do a video on that at some point because that is also very interesting. And different pistols, single action guns like 1911s, 2011s versus, you know, striker fired guns. There's quite a few differences, but also some key similarities. But anyway, let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like and let me know down in the comments. We'll do more stuff like this. I just thought it was a cool idea uh, because I just got a gun with a new operating system, the roller delayed action, which I didn't own before that. I shot an MP5 on the channel a couple years ago when I very first started this channel. A friend of mine loaned it to me and he barely ever shot that gun because he didn't want to get it dirty because he was afraid to take it apart because he didn't know how to clean it. It's easy. All of these things are easy. And I don't want any of you guys to be afraid to get into your guns because they're pretty simple, but they're also really amazingly complex when it comes to, you know, what it takes to fire rounds, to cycle reliably, to, you know, have recoil that is manageable, all that stuff. It is all very cool to me, and I hope it is cool to you guys as well. So let me know out in the comments if you like this. Let me know what your favorite action is. Are you a direct impingement guy? Do you like a short stroke gas piston in your AR, you know, like a HK416 or something, or like a SIG MCX? Are you a long stroke gas piston person? Do you love roller delayed actions or direct blowback for sub guns, PCCs? Let me know what your favorite is and why. I love to hear from you guys in the comments. I try to reply to as many of them as I can. From Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.